Social recruiting. Does it work? On this week's episode of Work Trends, we're talking about the evolution of recruiting on social media and how we think it's going to change. Stay tuned for big ideas from Michael Webb and Cindy Travella, recruiting and employer branding veterans who are working together to simplify social and inbound recruiting at the startup work scene. Welcome to the Work Trends podcast from Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan M. Biro. Every week, we interview interesting people who are reimagining work. And join us on Twitter every Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, using the hashtag WorkTrends. I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Kevin W. Grossman. Hello, Megan M. Biro. How are you doing this fine day? I'm doing cold. That's how I'm doing. <laughs> oh, brr, I know, right? I, I can't even. That's why I don't like to talk about weather in the wintertime. Because mm. even though it's cold and rainy here, that's not the same cold that you have there. It goes deep into your bones to all you other people out there in New England. We're staying positive through it. And uh, I'm doing well. I am speaking of New England and then getting out of New England. I'm excited to travel a bit. And I know we've got some really fun events coming up this year. We've got, you know, everything from recruiting trends to HR Transform to ERE to SHRM and many others in between. So it's going to be busy. Absolutely. Not to mention Unleash and all the talent board workshops that we're going to do and the talent culture panel chats that we've got lined up. Mercy me, it's going to be a busy, busy, busy t first half of 2019. Yes, it is. And I'm excited to see people in person, right? And to talk shop about HR and recruiting and leadership and, you know, technology, which continues to just ebb and flow and grow. I mean, these are truly exciting times. Absolutely. Now, today, we're going to be talking about social recruiting with work scene. But before we do that... Let's get to the news first. So we all know how social media is also a double-edged sword. It can help your brand, totally help your brand. You can help you reach sought-after candidates that you're looking for. And it can totally bring you down a bit, too. No matter how much you want to, you can't control it. But you can encourage and guide it. For example, consider Airman Kelly Davis, who has more followers than the Air Force's new F-35A demo team. She has three times as many followers as the USAF ROTC Instagram page. She has 12,200 plus followers on Instagram compared to the 10,300 for the new official US Air Force F-35 demo team. The whole point is that it's a total boon for the Air Force when it comes to visibility and recruiting. Now, it hasn't hurt that she's leveraged her looks. That's her words, not mine, from the article <laughs> that I read. Sure. I, I'm just letting everybody else know that out there. Also, with just the way that she's using social media and her depiction of life in the Air Force really has helped to create a value add for the Air Force. That's big, don't you think, Megan? I think it's huge. And I think we've been seeing this trend happen, especially in the recruiting space for the, the, the last decade, really. And so it's always interesting to me when you see this dynamic happening. Absolutely. So it can be a big boon for, for an employer, but unfortunately, the double-edged sword comes into play. And there's been some not-so-positive social media stories about the Air Force of late, which didn't help their visibility and recruitment. Again, you can't always control what's shared and when, but you can do a better job of aggregating the positive people and stories that can share to improve your visibility and recruitment. Absolutely. And speaking of recruitment, let's talk with Work Scene about improving social recruiting. This is going to be a great show. Welcome to Work Trends, Michael and Cindy. Please introduce yourselves. Thank you, Megan. Uh, my name is Cindy Travella, and I am the Vice President of Strategic Relations for a brand new social media startup called Workscene. I had a background in human resources marketing, uh, content development, employer branding. I've worked with Fortune 500 companies uh, from all around the globe. 
And that experience has brought me to where I am today, working at WorkScene. And I would like to share with everybody, Cindy's name probably sounds pretty familiar to all you people in the talent culture community. She has been a friend and a colleague for many years. So we're so delighted to have her here today. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. Michael, tell us more about you. Uh, yes, um, my name is Michael Webb. Um, I'm the founder of uh, WorkScene, which is a, a new social startup um, really focused on recruiting. Uh, my background, I've been in recruiting for about 20 years from, you know, started as a coordinator, have worked as a VP of recruiting. Uh, probably about 10 years ago, I started building recruiting tools online and kind of have evolved into a bit of a serial entrepreneur. And I met Cindy kind of along this path and we've connected and have similar backgrounds and uh, share a common belief in the importance of kind of seeing recruiting evolve. Well, can I add myself into this mix? You and I, Michael, have something in common. We've both been in the recruiting space for many years. And as you just said, you specifically for around 20 years. Let's talk a little bit about inbound marketing and inbound recruiting, because that's really the new phrase, right? The new, new. We love that around here. Content's so important. So talk to us just a little bit more about that. Well, so from a content standpoint, I mean, the nice thing is, you know, most companies have the content. So if you're in uh, the HR department or the recruiting department um, and you're taking photos of people and, in, in, you know, enjoying your culture or the company picnic or things you're doing in the community, I mean, it's really gathering all that information um, and sharing it in a way that people can see what it's like to work at your company. Uh, you could share information about projects that are going on it, really it's it's endless i mean i think the the nice thing about kind of an inbound recruiting strategy is is that you know you, you create your own narrative you know you're going to tell your own story i think it would be visually versus you know you know kind of job postings where you're just reading about the details of the company so i would say you know the combination of kind of employer brand content in inbound marketing strategies but yeah content is definitely key Cindy, let's talk about social media in recruiting. In your work in the employer branding and HR marketing world, how have you seen social media recruiting play out? Well, I think social media as a whole um, to date has failed recruiting. It's not the panacea everyone believes it should be. And this is due to no fault of the people who are using it for recruiting. Um, They've been using what's available but what's available is not really well suited for the purposes of sourcing and recruiting. So social media, as we know it, um, it's more suited for the promotion of products and services, and it reveals the attributes of those items or services, but doesn't really tell anyone about the organization's culture and work environment. And really it shouldn't because if I'm selling a product or a service and I'm trying to push these products and services to a buying audience, my intention is to recruit them to buy my products and services, not to recruit them for employment. So uh, for products and services, fabulous tool for recruiting. Historically, it has not been very easy to use. It's kind of clunky, uh, difficult. It can be very, some platforms are extremely complex to use for recruiting purposes. So, um, you know, unfortunately, um, the existing social media options just are not really viable solutions for recruiting. You know, Cindy, that's a really good point. If you look at the history of recruiting and social media and employer brand, they're not well connected yet. So give us your take on job postings. I mean, job seekers are becoming more astute and savvy about targeting companies they favor. But there's still some people who apply for a job and even make it all the way through that interview process with one picture of what the company is like. And then when they start the job, it's totally different. We know we've been there, right? How have job postings failed recruiting? You talk about that. And how can we make job postings better to really paint a true picture, a real picture, an honest picture of the culture? Well, first, job postings don't tell candidates what they need to know about the work environment. They simply outline the job responsibilities. They don't reveal the culture of the organization. And they're not designed to do that. 
They're one-dimensional static messages, and basically they're designed to indicate job requirements and duties. So historically, job seekers have been conditioned to accept this because there aren't a lot of alternatives. But the good news is this is changing, and there's a lot of data that indicates the intention of the modern-day job seeker. We know that as new talent is entering into the workforce, they're not just looking for a position and a paycheck, though these are obviously important. Uh, they're looking for a relationship and, in the, and alignment with their employer. Uh, they want to know that their personal mission is in lockstep with the company before they make any attempt at applying for the job. And secondly, we need to get companies to stop using job postings exclusively. Now, we're not saying don't use them, but we're saying open up your options. Uh, they need to expand beyond job postings and create more of an inclusive message, more holistic, give job seekers more information and more awareness of the organization and not at the end of the process, at the beginning of the process, as job seekers are assessing opportunities you know, and looking at developing a list of their target companies. So, you know, businesses that continue to be comfortable and sedentary doing one thing and, you know, not integrating a, a more holistic approach, they're not going to really move the needle with the war for talent because they lack that integrated approach. So, Businesses need to become more of a talent magnet, become gatherers rather than strictly talent hunters, and give job seekers the chance to discover and learn more about their organization at the forefront by driving people to their business versus having businesses hunt them out. And as Michael was talking about earlier, it, this is inbound marketing in its truest sense. Uh Amen is one word I have to say to all that, Cindy. I mean, so true. So much sage happening here in this conversation right now. Michael, talk to us. What's your take on this? Well, when I think of job postings, I mean, I don't know that the job postings are actually to blame. So I'll probably date myself a little bit with this comment. But if you think of the evolution of the job board, right? So initially, people were looking for jobs in classified ads. And I remember at the time I was working in the Silicon Valley when uh, Hot Jobs came in and said, hey, you can now post these jobs online. And so, you know, the job posting is, is really designed to share, you know, the information about the job itself to the candidate. And then, you know, over time, you know, as, as primarily all jobs moved online, somewhere along the line, an HR person decided to, or a recruiter decided that they were going to start including information about the company on the job postings, and it just kind of stuck. And so, you know, whether you're using a, a job site or a social networking site, I mean, people are relying on the job posting to convey information about the company. And so I think the job postings are still a part of the equation, but I think the job posting should be kind of in the middle of the recruiting funnel. And then at the top of the funnel, to Cindy's point, you know, the company needs to show off who they are kind of on the front end and let people come in who think that they align with the culture and then they can see what positions they have that are open over time. And I think... You know, one of the things that allows that to really take place is when companies start using talent communities. Because in a talent community, you can kind of nurture relationships with job seekers and they can see jobs as they become open, but they already know they want to work for the company. But you're right. It, it, oftentimes, you know, you'll see job postings on a site. There'll be 25 positions for an account manager. Uh, the account manager that's looking for a job applies to all 25 because they can't really differentiate uh, one company from the other. And they don't know that the company isn't what they want until they show up for the job interview, or they don't know that the company is what they want until they show up for the interview. And I just think it, you know, it's just kind of kind of rethinking the process a little bit. I mean, you know, there's so Wait a much minute. information hey, being shared. Hey, Michael, rethinking the process a little bit? I think uh, that's the understatement of the year, okay? Michael, you're too kind. To, okay. You're too kind. That's all I'm going to say. I, I think we absolutely have to reimagine job postings. As a former recruiter in the tech space, job postings have absolutely failed recruiting. They failed recruiters, they failed job seekers, and they failed the brand. And it makes us lazy. 
That's the bigger point here. We become lazy by just relying on job postings. So this is such a refreshing conversation. I am so excited to hear more about work scene as you guys continue to progress. Okay, so I know our work trends audience always wants tactical advice. What are your tips for how we can all do a better job recruiting online? So going back to Michael's point about uh, inbound recruiting strategies uh, and companies revealing their culture, uh, revealing their mission, their values on the front end rather than waiting until somebody has applied for a job. You know, that's part of the reason why companies miss hire people, right? Because they're not looking at the right things at at the get-go, looking at attitude and trainability and fit. Those are things that are probably more important within an organization. Very, very technical skills needed aside, but those things are probably more important for an organization than if somebody can, you know, check a box or, you know, type something in a Word document. Those things can be trained. Those things can be learned. So companies need to, again, take on that more inbound uh, approach and reveal their culture on the front end. And, and Michael mentioned talent communities. Those are extremely important. Being able to um, you know, ha- gather people rather than always be hunting for people, that puts people in more of a reactive mode. Whereas talent communities put recruiting in the driver's seat by giving them more of a proactive role. You've got a group of people, you know they're interested, you just need to keep them warm, keep them engaged, um, make sure that as job opportunities come up that may be appropriate for them, that they are made aware of these. And not to mention, what if you have a position and you interview three people for it? And of course, you only have one opening. So you you're going to hire the best of the three. What do you do with the silver and bronze medalist? Those people need to go back into your talent community where they can be kept warm, yeah, and engaged because you already know they're interested in your organization, they're interested in, in your culture, and those are the things that you know, make it all work and you know make it magical at the end of the day. All those silver medalists out there, are you listening? You hear this? Stay in the game. It matters, right? <laughs> so, listen, we've all been think, watching. Like, so, uh, yeah. No, I think on, with online recruiting, I think the challenge is, you know, the interaction candidates and recruiters have with job boards, it's really very transactional. You know, I need someone now, I'm going to post a job, which is transactional. And so to Cindy's point about talent communities, with a talent community, you know, I think that your online recruiting strategy becomes less transactional. So people can join your talent community because you know they're the silver or bronze medalist or you know they could be a gold medalist for you in the future and they can join your talent community to learn about your company before they apply because maybe they're thinking of changing jobs you know 12 months down the road so they can familiarize themselves with your company before they apply you know so again you know you have people that know they want to be there which is better than posting a job and you know hoping someone applies in the next you know 15 days that can fill this position. You know you could have a whole, I guess a you could have a pipeline of candidates that have followed the company and are familiar with the company that you know have seen the things you've done in the community, uh, things that are going on in the office, and you know this the, the people could have been in that pipeline for you know 12 months, 18 months, six months, three months. But I don't think great people are always looking at the same time that you need them. So that's kind of my thought. We've all been watching the HR tech space for a long time. And I think a lot of companies have been trying to improve social recruiting. So kudos to all you companies out there trying. Cindy, I want to hear from you on this. What has the HR tech industry missed when it comes to social recruiting? I think HR technology, uh, simply put, it has oversaturated its space with more versions of what already exists and missed the opportunity to develop and advance platforms that create opportunities for sourcing and recruiting to have a bona fide inbound recruiting tool. 
And eight, HR tech, it's not social media. And further, social media, as we've all said, it's failed companies. It doesn't allow recruiting to access platforms designed to help them do their jobs effectively or efficiently. The current state of social media does not allow companies to really show enough about the human side of their business. Again, because it is more geared towards the product and service side. So we need to bridge that gap. No question about it. And I love the idea that, you know, we're still hiring people. And if tech is helping us do that, great. So I love the fact that we're just boiling this down and simplifying it because it's true. And you're either effectively doing that or you're not. There's really no, there's not a lot of in between there, really. So here we are. We're in 2019, and we're all thinking about the future of work. How do you think recruiting will evolve in the coming year? I mean, I think recruiting is evolving. I mean, I think the the biggest change that we're going to see is I think the companies are starting to figure out that their brand story uh, or their ability to kind of create their own narrative and build their or you know reinforce their employer brand. I think that that's something that's becoming more and more important to companies, and I think it's always been important. I just you know, don't think there's been an, an easy way to do that. And I know I've come out of many meetings where people are talking about, you know, working on the company's employer brand, but, you know, there's no blueprint or specific action, you t- you know, in the past that you could take to make that a reality. So I think as, you know, more platforms become available that are designed to help companies reinforce their employer brands and build talent communities, I think you're going to see more companies kind of shift to that to that mindset. So, you know, my my hope is that companies will take a more strategic approach and use tactics like inbound marketing and also being more transparent around their company culture. Again, trying to appeal to new talent as it's entering into the workforce and being able to accommodate their needs. And I believe this. I believe that everyone in the workforce, we all share, you know, a common bond. We all want a great job. We all want respect. We all want fair pay. We all want meaning in our work. Those things are true of anybody within any generation. But as new talent, newer talent is coming into the workforce, they're demanding more of those things. So companies will need to pivot. They're going to need to become more flexible, more revealing. And I think that by doing that, I believe that by doing that, they are going to gain a better advantage, a greater advantage in finding the right people that are the right fit for their organization. Okay, so time for some last quick fire tips. If somebody is listening and wants to move the needle on candidate experience this year, what's one thing they can do? I sound a bit uh, repetitive here because this has been said a hundred times, but I'll repeat it again. Think like a marketer and never underestimate the value of relationship building and revealing the human side to your business. Thoughts on candidate experience, Michael? Candidate experience, I mean, is absolutely important. I mean, I I think you know, you have to work within the, the resources you have and the limitations you have. But I mean, I think that one thing to do is to, you know, to analyze your existing recruiting process to see if there are areas where you could make improvements, um, you know, make the process smoother. But I mean, ideally, you know, part of that candidate experience would be the company, you know, kind of showcasing who they are you know, b- before the candidate comes to the office. You know, I don't know, I mean, there are ways to do that, but yeah, I, I think the candidate experience is absolutely what the candidate knows about your company be- before they get there uh, and how you treat them when they're there. And I think you can make improvements to all aspects of the, the process. I think there are, you know, there are different phases of that candidate experience. And how you treat that silver medalist and beyond. I mean, it's so important to remember that as we're in 2019, this isn't as much about recruiting as it is retaining talent. If you want to get strategic, that's where, at least from my perspective, I think companies also need to be, you know, placing emphasis because there's nothing better than having people stay at your brand or move around within your brand. So I can safely say after this conversation, you are making inbound recruiting a thing. So 
It's all good. Cindy and Michael, thanks so much for being here today. I have a special treat for the Work Trends audience. If you're interested in a new social media platform designed for recruiting and you want to give it a try, you can get 50% off if you sign up for WorkScene. Just go to WorkScene.com and enter the code TC2019. Megan, that was great. The key is transparency around company culture and why employees work at a company and why they stay. We hear it every year from the candidates who participate in the Talent Board Benchmark Research. Very true. True that. And again, why highlighting your employee evangelist, and yes, I use that word on purpose, is so key. Let's keep the conversation going. Join us for the Work Trends Twitter chat. We are going to be on the Twitters with Michael and Cindy on Wednesday, January 23rd at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, or wherever you are in the world. Join us and tell us what you've learned about hiring. If you'd like to get our Twitter chat questions in advance, sign up for our newsletter at talentculture.com. Thanks for listening to Work Trends from Talent Culture. Join us every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern for a live Twitter chat with our podcast guest. To learn more about guests featured on today's show, visit the show notes for this episode at talentculture.com and help us spread the word. Subscribe to Work Trends wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a rating, review, and iTunes. Share Work Trends with your coworkers, your friends. Look forward to it. See you next time.